Welcome to the tutorial for the Advanced Merida. This is available for a limited time as a resin and fiberglass kit. The steps that I'm outlining in this video, especially with trimming the seam line, filling the seam line, sanding and polishing and painting, these steps can all be used in building up any of the other kits that I'm offering. You want to start prepping this casting most of your work will be trimming the seam line and removing any kind of surface issues. And you can see I'm doing this here with a blade. Here, a file is used to take down the seam line in any of these recessed areas. The file is great because you can just go ahead and carve into some of the shapes that are inside of other shapes. So it's a great shortcut and a really quick way to trim down seam line. And then once some of those issues are taken care of, you can start addressing the seam line. And the easiest way to do this is with an electric sander. And you can see here that the seam line is reduced fairly quickly, just running the sander up and down across the seams. Having reduced those seam lines with the sander, you can go ahead and mix a little Bondo to start filling in any kind of pits or imperfections across that seam line. Now apply this Bondo across the seam line and any areas that need some filling. Let this cure for a little while. You're going to notice at the butt of the gun there's a sprue and this is required for actually producing this casting. You can fill this in by just spreading in Bondo into this hole, taping it over, and then letting it sit upside down so that the Bondo fills into that cavity. Then when that's cured, you can take it to a belt sander and go ahead and sand it flat as I'm showing you here. You can see in this step that I'm again using the electric sander to take down the Bondo and fill in the seam line. The Dremel is used here with a variety of bits to hollow out any areas that you're unable to reach with sandpaper and files. The silver base coat was applied with an airbrush. The silver that we're using here is just a standard acrylic water-based silver. Now here's where the fun begins with the airbrush. Matt explains some of the detail work required to make this gun look realistic. Because you, you kind of have to picture, okay, it's a brand new gun, it's sitting on the, on the bench waiting for somebody to come pick it up and go fight with it. What does it look like? Then you get a picture in your head, okay, after the fight, goes back to that bench, he turns it in, what's it going to look like? Okay, because now that looks more like a, a button on a brand new gun. Yep. Then you can come in and shade something uh, or leave it like that because if you think he's, like here, if he's holding this, these are going to have powder burns. These are going to have wear marks. This one is not. Mm -hmm because he's got his thumb there. You're going to miss all that if you do it all shaded black right. first. You're not going to be, be able like to get any, de any highlights. Or Although not way, completely necessary, necessary, detailing the lines and deep undercuts of this gun make it just pop. It just makes it look a little more realistic, makes it look a lot more dramatic. So anywhere there's panel lines, anywhere there's a button, anywhere there's some kind of a carved in detail that looks like it could be a slide switch, or just a panel that's on top of another panel, it's helpful to go ahead and shade those areas. So here you can see that we're using the airbrush and a very fine tip and a very fine spray to go in and shade any of the areas that are dimensional. You can tell that all of this shading makes a dramatic difference between a paint job that's just plain silver and a paint job that's silver with all of this undertone highlighting. Once all of this airbrush detail work is completed, you can give the entire gun a light misting of black, flat black. Now we're almost finished. To give this gun a more durable finish, just go ahead and use a matte overcoat and just give the gun an entire spray down with this flat, clear. It's going to prevent any kind of smearing if it gets wet, and it'll just make it more durable for outdoor use. 
We never get to see the advanced Merida from the rear, so I invented this little detail here at the butt of the gun, but what I did is I just took some ribbed rubber and I just traced out the shape of the butt of the gun, trimmed out the rubber, and just applied it with some super glue and some spray kicker. And there you have a fully finished, fully detailed advanced Merida. These are all important steps and required steps when building a garage kit, so learn from this video and apply it to any of the other kits. Thanks for watching. If you're interested, click on these thumbnails to check out the other feature tutorials.